Um, so I've been promising to do a description of how the analytical engine works for a while. Um, and I was trying to write one that was clear, but it's actually most clear, I think, uh, just to show um, how it animates. Um, so I've built this uh, sort of, um, it's a baby engine. This is not what the engine, the analytical engine actually looks like. This is a very completely stripped down cartoon version. Um, sort of, everything is sort of simplified and uh, um, embiggened uh, so you can see what's going on more clearly. Um, it looks more complicated than, um, than actually it may be. Um, if I just go through and explain each bit, um, it's actually quite uh, beautiful and elegant, uh, the way it works. So um, what you're looking at here is, uh, is kind of the lower level of the engine. Um, if the whole thing, if we look at it, um, is actually way too heavy for my computer to cope with. Um, you can see it gets super heavy. Um, but these are all, each of these slices going up uh, is actually a decimal place in a number. So each of these columns is a number of 50 decimal places uh, by Babbage's specification. Um, so this column is a number, this column is a number, um, but they're all doing the same thing, uh, just replicated up. So uh, we can actually ignore all that stuff and just look at one level. So this is just one decimal place. Um, the parts of the engine are uh, what we call the mill, which is the central processor, which is all these bits here. Uh, the store, that's the storage uh, memory, uh, which is this long thing going back here. It actually goes on, it would go on, kind of extend all the way back here, which, you know, depending on how many numbers you want to be able to store. Um, it actually took three different kinds of cards to run a program. Uh, we'll go through each of those. Um, uh, basically, the, the, um, just to give a visual aid here, the, the red, um, when bits turn red, they're, they're active um, drivers, I guess you'd say, and the green uh, things are, are being driven. Um, and they, they switch around a bit, so that's why I animated that. Um, so the first kind of card is the number card. Um, that's say, uh, this holds whatever numbers you want to feed in for a uh, program. Um, just like each of these numbers has 50 decimal places, each number card has to also hold 50 decimal places. So it's a big card with um, 50 columns of 10 places each. Uh, and then you would put a hole, um, actually everything has a hole except the place you want. So if you um, if you want a three, you have whole, 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 and then at the three position, you have no whole. Um, and then if we kind of close on in here, um, the bits with no hole will push the levers. Uh, as I said, this is not how it actually works. This is the cartoon version, uh, just kind of really quick and dirty, um, just so you can uh, kind of see how it works. But this is how punch card works uh, on a jacquard loom, for example. Um, the, um, the cards push forward, and if there's a hole, they just slide through and nothing happens on the lever. And if there's no hole, uh, then that lever gets pushed and activated. And uh, what they do when they activate is they basically hook up um, uh, all these little tiny other levers, which I haven't put in, uh, and they read the numbers off onto somewhere on the store. Um, the address is on the card with the number. Um, and by address, I just mean where on the store um, it's going to be read. So that number card is going to read off onto this part of the store. Uh, and when you read off onto the store, the little pinions kind of hook up. That's these little guys. Uh, and then these long things are called the racks, and they're just racks with teeth on them. And the racks transfer the numbers back and forth. Uh, and they just do that by, they'll just go however many places uh, is on the card they'll go that many places and turn the wheel that many places. So if it's a three, it'll just go three notches and turn this wheel three notches. So now that's reading three. So that just holds that number there. Uh, and then pinion drops down. And then it picks up your second number, back to the variable card, or the number cards here. Got the second number. Push forward, read it off onto some other section of the store. So that's down here now. Reads that off, drops down. 
All right, so now we store two numbers in uh, the memory, and we're ready to do a thing with them. Um, the order that I'm doing it here is slightly wrong by how the engine itself worked. Um, just for clarity, uh, I'm now bringing in the um, the operations card because uh, for me that it, I just found it a bit more clear. The operation cards um, are over here. Uh, they have a lot fewer holes. The, because the engine only had really four operations. It could add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, this is a, a machine for arithmetic. That's all it could do, and it could only do um, those four things. Um, although, obviously, if you combine those in clever ways, um, then you can do all sorts of things, and that's kind of the whole art of uh, programming this particular engine. Um, so it only has these, these uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide positions and then a hole to ring a bell and a hole to stop the engine. Uh, I think that's it. There might be a couple more, but that's, that's basically all it can do. Um, the genius of the machine, I mean, many, one of the many, many geniuses of Babbage's beautiful machine, um, is the way the operations cards uh, work. Um, is almost a bit like a higher level language because you only have to put one hole in, uh, and then that hole will then operate to turn these barrels. Um, and the barrels, again, this is the cartoon engine, the actual barrels have like 50 or 80 uh, pegs each um, because there's so many different levers they need to activate. Um, the barrels are then going to run through the actual program and do all the operations. It's, it's, their barrels are sort of a machine code, I guess, because they actually push everything into place. Um, and the, the operation card just says, okay, turn around to the section for, ad for addition, say, let's say, let's say we're going to add our numbers. So that just rotates the barrel around to so it's ready to add and locks that in. Um, and what that does is that it sets up the machine to go to this section. Each little kind of wedge uh, around the, um, the mill does a different thing. So these are kind of little departments specialized uh, of bits of gearing. Um, and the barrels just basically say, okay, we're going to go over here and do the addition bit. Um, all right, so now we're ready to go, so we need to pick up our numbers. Uh, and the numbers are picked up with the variable cards, uh, which the variable cards are basically the dressing system. So they say, okay, when you're programming, you're actually wrangling these three kinds of cards completely separately, which uh, I think would be super <laughs> difficult to do um, if you actually had to program this thing. Um, but you can see that physically, this is way over here and this is way over here, so they, they kind of have to be separate cards. Uh, and also, there's just so many holes and levers, it's just, I guess, more convenient to have them on a separate card. Um, all right, so we're all hooked up, ready to add, so we just have to pick up the numbers from the addresses. You, you, the programmer um, has selected what addresses they want uh, and punched them onto the card. And then the card, uh, also, the variable cards will use the barrels to, um, to set up. And let's say it wants this address, which we read on to uh, earlier. So that selects that address. Now it's red because this is driving. So this is going to read 3 from here onto the ingress axis, what uh, that was called. Um, ingress, obviously, this is the, the axis that uh, is reading the numbers off into the engine. Uh, so that hooks up and just reads that off. So by turning 3 places, that also turns this 3 places. And now this is reading 3. And this is reading 0. Uh, the engine reads numbers just by zeroing out. Um, so that goes three places. So three to zero, this is going zero to three. All right, now the, the numbers on the ingress axis. All right, now the operation cards, or the barrels rather, uh, would activate and read off this number from the ingress axis into the mill, into whatever section it wants, right? So, from the store, into the ingress axis, from the ingress axis, into the mill. Um, I think there, again, another point that I'm slightly confused on is, um, I'm not sure if it reads it one at a time, or if um, there's two ingress axis. If the machine can only cope with two numbers at a time. Um, but for simplicity, I've just had it read each number off the store one at a time. So it. Um, Reads one number off, now it picks up a second number, reads that off, 
Uh, so it's picking up from the store, second number, onto the ingress axis. Then the ingress axis becomes active, so it turns red, uh, and reads off the second number into the mill. Um, now, the, all the mills things tend to be pretty complicated. Um, if you look at the video I did for the um, anticipating carriage, uh, that shows you um, how complicated these things are. And that's actually probably the simplest thing in the engine. Um, so there's a million things that you're doing. Uh, so for the cartoon engine, they're just sort of randomly turning um, as, the, as though they're doing some calculation over here. Um, meanwhile, the barrels, in order to run the calculation, the barrels will then run independently. They'll just go around their little wedge you know, there'll be a wedge of, of pegs arranged to do, you know, to set everything up. Because it, there's usually several steps um, in a calculation. Even something as simple as, adi as addition has to go through a whole bunch of things. So the barrels are on their own now. They're, they're just going to run through a wedge of, of um, instructions. Uh, but now we're done, let's say. And uh, we now have our result. We've just added 3 and 2 or whatever. This is now reading 5. Uh, and that will then drop down and read onto the output, or the egress axis, uh, as it's called. Uh, and that just reads it choop, like that. Um, so this is 5, 5, 5, 5. So it's just r running that 5 is going across this whole system here. Um, and then the egress axis is instructed by, again, the variable card will say, OK, read the output onto uh, exit, you know, address 5 or 7 or whatever address it's selected, um, pre-selected on this whole lot over here. Uh, so that just turns around, selects the address, hooks up to the um, rack, and that reads the 5 into the storage. So now the storage is reading 5. Um, that can also read out to a printer, more complicated than a box, uh, or it can even print back out onto a card, which is super clever, it can punch its own cards. Um, so that's kind of the process. If we go back through, number card reads first number into the store, reads the second number into another part of the store. The operation is selected and hooks everything up. A variable card reads the address out. Number first number reads second number. Mill does its little jazz. Hooks up to the output reads back out into the store, selects the address, and then reads it out. And there it is. Um, I hope that's fairly clear. Um, the, the whole, the, I, again, I, I just want to reiterate, this is super simplified and also wrong in some places. I've shifted the order of things around um, just for clarity, uh, or my own clarity. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how it works. And uh, if you watch the whole thing, just kind of operate. It's very pretty and nice. Um, so yeah, that's it, the analytical engine and how it works. Thanks.